G'day, he's all going in there, Indianapolis, Australia here. Welcome to my video. I uh, got a beautiful painting idea. I've got a, a reference picture I'm going to show you, and we're going to put a bit of detail in this depth and perspective. And I want to show you how we follow along from, say, like a reference picture the things you should and shouldn't do, or that can hinder you or help you okay uh, so we've got our size of our canvas that I'm going to use in my tutorial today up there it's just a canvas panel in inches and centimeters centimeters or inches all right and we'll also get the colors going up the screen there as well so if you want to write them down pause it and write them down and the good thing about this is watch the video work out what's going to happen and then you can paint and pause and paint and pause and carry on with this show all right all right and also check the links in the description below because there's a few links there you need to look at for me Facebook patreons another YouTube channel and art for sale okay because I, I, I met a guy he's called gray scales he's got a YouTube channel there and I'd like to um, get a lot of you people out there to have a look at his channel and see what he's offering as well because he's doing stuff very beautifully and he's using glycerin and stuff like that to help the acrylic paints flow his name's grayscale look for the link in the description below okay all right so this is going to be a good painting and what i mean by a good painting is a painting that you've got to put a bit of effort into and when you put an effort into a painting you know you're going to have a great piece of work at the end of it all right so get on over here and let's have a look okay i found this photograph and I've, I like the way it's got distant hills and some foliage in the mid-range and front of the photograph here. And we've got some waterfall, water and sky. We've got a tree here, but I won't add that. So this is the reference. I'm not going to copy it exact, but I'm going to use the layout. So like have a distant hills there, some trees and even trees closer with some rock and maybe some waterfall happening. All right. So I spent the time laying out the layout with a pencil on my canvas here and I've used a pencil. Some people carry on, oh, doesn't pencil bleed through? It doesn't for me. If you've got a real cheap, opaque, thin paint, it might do. But if you're going to do a painting of quality, try and get some good quality paints, okay? So I've just pretty much drawn out the, the, the layout of the the hills, the the mid tone, the middle range and the front foliage here and some water. And we're gonna block it in. But before we block it in, I'll just put the sky in first. Now for me, the simple ingredients behind a basic sky with realism is quinacridone magenta, French ultramarine blue, and some craft paint, flow paint, soft body paint, student paint. Different places call it different names. Over here, I call it flowing white. And this is what we're going to use to condition the canvas to get our sky happening. So we've got retarder with that. Just a little dob on there. So firstly, I want to prime up my canvas panel. Whether it's already gesso primed or not, I'm going to put this paint and retarder mixture onto my canvas. So there's the sky there. We'll block in the sky just to where our layout is. It helps to do your layout. That way you know where everything's going to stop and start. Now that is wet, retarded and moist. We just want a light adding of the French ultramarine blue. So this brush is still full of white. We'll get a bit of this, get some retarder in it. Just a bit of it on the brush. Because you don't want your sky very dark. And I'll start at the top. And I just want to bring it down to the horizon there. Just something there. See, it's very light. It's not too aggressive in color. And skies have this about them. Look at the sky. You'll even see the purple tinge or the tone running through it. And that's what I want to put in it with the magenta, okay? So we have the brush. We haven't even washed it. Let's grab a bit of the magenta, quinacridone magenta. And mix it with some blue to get the um, that tinge, the purpley polluted hazy tinge in the sky. Add some white as we go. Or you can even do it in there if you want. There we go. That's the colour I want. Okay. 
and virtually the bottom of your sky or for me I like to bring it from there up and gradient through your color so I'm gonna bring it there and gradient through now if you've ever done this where you've stroked it across and it's got a heavy band there and you're not quite brushing it out just as you're doing it push it upwards with your brush as you're doing it and it'll help manipulate it and that way you're telling the paint you're the boss okay there's our decent sky color we've got that purpley hazy hinge in it and the the to me a decent brightness of blue it's not too bright now while that is still wet we'll move along and just put some clouds in there whether you're going to have a lot of clouds or not very many it's up to you my simple recipe for some basic but effective clouds come down here we've got our titanium white out of the tube it's not like this craft paint it's nothing like that at all it's a lot better quality and we've still got the quinacridone magenta now i've got some gray toning gray out of a tube there i just bought that or you can mix your own up now we want to mix this because you can have gray but you don't want it too gray see now what look at what i've gone and done there you idiot that is too i put too much magenta in there it's very strong reds so we want that just tinted into the grey. Let's see what we can get there. There we go, that's better. It's just tinted. So that's our shadow colour for our clouds. And this is our cloud colour. So we'll start with the cloud cover colour. I'm just getting that. I, I prefer to use a um, fan brush for this. You can use round brushes or whatever. Now I don't want too much cloud in the sky. I, I probably want something coming out of here and I want some sort of overhead stuff now I want to start trying to paint some overhead business so just like that if anything I've wedged it from the center and coming out off the page then we want to blend so grab a, your blending brush and something to constantly wipe the build up and start dancing and twisting and we're gonna blend the first layer of cloud into the sky wipe it as you go get it out there once you do a cloud you stick to the same way you might notice if you've watched a few of my videos I do my clouds pretty much the same way all the time okay that's not too bad but it's very what would you say it's just white one color the first people that's come to my channel here what I like to do is we'll start adding dimension to that now so we're picking up that gray color we've mixed you want that for the bottom of your cloud and you sort of spider up into your cloud appropriately okay grab your blending brush again and you want to just push that into the white work out how much to blend okay because if you look at clouds you see the gray purpley color through them they're not just solid white okay we're blending that easily I want to keep a bottom on there to give the illusion that it's coming up over our head bring it up there and we've got the second layer of cloud in there that's very easy to do and the finished process will give it that realistic look okay all right so we've got that there that was our easy now the, the third and final step is to pick up your white again and those people that are familiar with me you know what I'm doing we're adding the yumminess to the cloud a little bit around the top there and just crack in some vibrant business in the middle of it and then that is just subtly twisted manipulated so you got some bite bright vibrancy within that grays the shadow color and it's sort of creating the illusion that the clouds not flat it's it's a shape there we go I'm just putting one more on this side something to break up the sky so it's not so lonely you don't want a lonely sky do you all right one white flat cloud add some shadow boom 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 easily blend that through to the cloud there okay and pick up your white brush again and add your yumminess
practice this yumminess on clouds if you haven't done clouds before. And I've got to stress, people, if you're not done painting for quite a while or you just started, practice things before you do a full painting, okay? Please practice. You can't just look at a tutorial if you haven't painted before and expect it to work for you. There we go. Okay, that's your sky finished. We're not really doing any more blending anymore, so I want to blow dry that and block in everything now. Okay, that's dry. Last night I was um, experimenting with some other greens as well. So this is the chart that I showed you in a previous video, Understanding Your Greens. Um, if you haven't seen that one, go back. It's a few videos before this one, and it's called Understanding Your Greens. And... I've just been trying some other colours. Come over here and I'll show you. So obviously we've been mixing the greens I showed you in the other video with the cadmium yellow light. So I've used the light again and also a cadmium yellow medium just to show you the difference. And I've just picked up what you can get from the shop forest green and sap green, okay? So that's the forest green and the sap green mixed with the cad yellow light, okay? Adding a bit adding a bit more forest green, a bit more to the mix, and a bit more till you're getting darker. And the same with the sap. The sap was very similar in colour. So you can, in my opinion, I could either use sap or forest knowing that it's going to be the same block in colour or depth. Now just to show what the medium light does, the cadmium yellow medium, it's very similar but more heavy to me in colour. So this first one, pretty similar colour to that but more heavy. You see the difference? This, it looks more heavier than there. That's, that's what you're getting with the cadmium yellow medium. All right, so I might block in with this and then detail with this one, knowing it's going to be heavier, not too dark or watery. So we've got our sky in the way we wanted our sky to be. It doesn't have to be the same as this. Now we're going to, on my canvas, I've penciled out the distant mountain, these tree lines here, a horizon line this level and then this bit coming down a bit lower and then the rock here and a few rocks there so we're going to just get the different colored greens and block in the brown and the blue and the white so on so just getting back to here I want to block in with the medium color so I can add the light or the darks over the medium okay so block in with the medium that's the way I want to do it and then use the lights and darks so I've got some uh, sap green there. I'm just going to use sap green because I already know by the chart I made yesterday or testing it that the sap and the forest green are going to produce pretty much the same colour. But the cadmium yellow medium is going to add more heaviness to our tones. So I want to block in the, the distant mountain there. So I'm going to just mix up a tone there to block that in okay. So let's work out. I'm looking at that photo reference and this is pretty much the color now grab some water and keep just on top of this stuff so it'll stay a bit wet but don't overdo the water I'm just using a filbert brush here to block it in and to me that's going to be a decent color block in my distant mountain so I'm gonna I'll get the edge done I want to try and get it a bit wrinkly at the top or broken so it looks like distant trees on top there not just a straight line the other one I did was a bit too straight for my liking okay this is why we just roughly penciled it in and this is just going to block in down to here okay okay that's the only time I'm going to use that one there now we want the lighter color trees in the foreground in the mid ground that we've got so we're going to grab some more of this and just make a lighter tone of it so leave some of it there so you've got a judgment of how light it's going add a bit more yellow okay so we block in well I like to block in with the cadmium yellow medium and then all the other greens that we mix up will be with the light cadmium yellow light now I've got these mid trees here, so I'll start with the top, get them, see this is a different colour. Just work out the tops. See, I should have, could have dried that, I haven't, but for your sake, beginners, dry that. So you're not going to get any bleeding, you want the blocking to be all on its own, okay? So 
we've got that middle area blocked in now. So we've got this blocked in. We've just blocked all that in. Now this one seems to be a bit on the lighter side. So we'll block all that green there in now with a bit more lighter by adding more yellow to that mix that we've already got. Okay, so we're going to add more yellow. I better put some more on my palette there. Get a bit more in there. So I want to show you what the mixing involves. And once again, I can see where all my blocking in area is going to be here. So it's virtually going to come around. Now, you, I'm just using this filbert brush. You use whatever brush works for you or what you're comfortable with. Okay. Just looking at the reference picture, it'll, we'll, oh, there is some lighter areas sort of coming up above here. So I'll just map them in as well. Get something there. That'll do. So we've got the, the, the green areas blocked in. Now we're going to block in our rocks and just our water. So we, I've got some rocks here and here. So I'm going to use the burnt umber for here and add some white with it. And probably this one here, a lighter brown like the yellow oxide or something like that. Now that's just blocked in. And we can detail that as we come forward as well. While that's still wet, I'm picking up some burnt umber because in the reference picture, there is darkness. So while it's wet, I'd like to play and take advantage of that wetness because what I want to do is put some of those darker aspects in there. This rock can pretty much be detailed now if it wants because all the foliage is going to come over it. So we just sort of, as best we can, it doesn't have to be great. This is just something sitting there. Look at, look at your reference and work out where some dark bits and just place them in there like so. All right, now we'll put block in the water. I'm just grabbing some of the white mixed with that yellow oxide and um, adding some highlights to this rock as well because I think what I'll do is this rock will be sat down with all the detail of the foliage, so I'm just pretty much doing as much detail as I can with this now. Okay. And then it doesn't have to be touched again. So I'm just scrumbling in highlights, darker bits here and there, looking at the reference, sort of seeing where there's some light bits. I don't care how it's going to work out. But at the end of the day, with the, when the painting's finished, it'll all look good. It'll come into play with itself. That'll do. Okay, now we're going to block in the water. And looking at that, that's telling me we got turquoise. And we've got some really little dark bands just sitting there as well. We can block all that in. And we've got a big light area here as well. So I'll just dampen my brush a little bit. So this paint's going to move. And we've got the turquoise here. And we'll, we'll I want to get a little bit of lighter... Well, that's going to be my darker band there, and I'll use this for the actual full blocking in colour, which is just a little bit lighter than that. There we go. So that's the colour I want to block in, and I've drawn out roughly where that lighter band of water is. <laughs> All right, I've just blocked in this lighter area. The camera wasn't on when I was doing all that. I just realized. So all I've done is block this lighter area in. Now we add the darker elements to that blue like I showed you before what we, where we need them. Now that is pretty much our blocking in done. We've got our water, the different tones of brightness and darkness in the water, our rocks and our background, middle ground and foreground and different sh shades there. The sky is complete. 
The water is going to be in detail coming down these little waterfalls, okay? Now we're just going to use black for this part. Now grab yourself some brushes that are going to get this effect. I've got a small and a large deer foot. They're a deer foot because that's what it says on the brush. It's a deer foot. The shape of it looks like a, a horse's hoof. And I've got like a, 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 a daggered edge brush here. It looks like, the, like a chiseled edge or a, a dagger of a knife. But the, the bristles on it are quite strong, like wire type of thing, okay? Like um, steel wool sort of thing. So I want to bring you over here and show you what effect you need to get out of these brushes or something like this similar you have at home you can use to get this freckle effect on our blocking in stage, okay? So come on, get on over here. All right, so we've got different types of brushes. What is this one called? It's just a Monarch six millimeter but you can see the head of it okay and the bristles on this are quite strong so i want to show you on the palette here what this does now you don't want it like that like i've said in previous videos you can get some of the paint off your brush here then work see those little freckles there i'm going to use this to detail the real darker areas of the freckles because up there some of these freckles you want detail with depth like that okay now the deer foot that paints got a little bit of water in it that's what we want to get on there onto our blocked in color now I'm going to start from the back let's see get something going okay work out your pressure you don't want to overdo it now I'm going to pick up this other brush what I was explaining about and normally like down in here is going to be dark so I'm going to use this just to detail some of the darkness within this and I want it virtually coming down there I want all this bit here in my opinion dark now that back area we blocked in was with the forest green and we used the mid-tone Okay, now we're going to add our dark green. So I've just got the forest green over here. I've added a bit of water just so it's going to come off the brush. And you want these on your canvas. Nice and sharp and small as possible, but there so you can see them. I want to go do pockets of dark um, forest green in here, leaving some of the black freckles. With the top, it is far away, so just gently get some stuff poking up in the air so it's not such an even line out there. Just easily does it. Alright, that's pretty much the straight forest green over the black freckles where I want it. Now just to finish detailing that area there, because it's in the atmosphere, I'm just going to mute it down with some white. I've got to it's a matter of muting some down and just putting it on your canvas and seeing if it's too light or too dark, okay? Because this area, if anything, has this tone, values and colour to it. So leaving some of that forest green you put there, this is the virtual colour of that distant hill. So this is the distant hill. This is the colour of it. The forest green and the black freckles allowed the foundations for this detail to happen.
Okay, now we want some of these high bits just glared up with that light that's obviously coming through the picture. So I want to grab some more of the white and bring it to the muted colour I had and work out the value you need this. I'll put some more water on the brush. Pretty much nice and sharp. Don't you dare go heavy, you buggers. to that mix just to glare up this corner the very top where it's meeting the sky there's glare in the picture so I want to portray it here as well now grabbing the burnt umber and some yellow cadmium yellow light so we can get that dead grass dead twig stick color happening in there and we're gonna Stick something nice, sharp, and small. I've done with the back distant hill mountain there now. You can keep going on and on with that forever and ever and a day if you really wanted to, but we're going to get on to this next middle stage here, okay? So again, we're going to black freckle it. detail that shadow so I'm just looking at the reference roughly where things are darker than the rest and there's a lot of darkness coming up here I want to get some distance between that front and middle ground tree there so plenty of darkness there and that can just sort of taper up into it as well Looking at the reference, we've got some darker values of green there and maybe up in here a bit. So I'm going to grab the darker green and with this brush, I'll stamp them in there as well. So I've got the forest green there still. So I'm going to pick that up because I don't want it all black here. This is coming forward now. So we want more detail. So we're pretty much above all this rock. This is more foresty green there coming up. Cadmium yellow and light and mixing with some of that forest green just to lighten it a bit, brighten it up a bit. Now any bits where you want hovering over the rock so to speak shadow them in with this forest green just like that i want some there i want to keep some of that black there though but let's just say there some here where are we don't forget we're going to have a waterfall there so some of that's going to hover over before we detail it i've got to put the water in because stuff's going to go in front of it so i've got the titanium white and a little bit just a little bit of that french ultramarine blue just to kill the the pure white up of it all and I'm using this brush because it's quite scratchy in a way so find a brush that's going to be quite scratchy for you and I want to sort of give some sort of I don't know just some water in the background coming down okay how's that look hmm I'll have to do it and these ones we've got here so we've got some water Coming down under there. Don't overdo it. You can uh, you can overdo waterfalls. Just some element of water coming down. And I want this one like in the reference pitch. It's sort of squirting over that way. So obviously the rocks are allowing it to do that. 
Now this one's sort of coming, where are we? I don't want to think too much, just want to bring it down. Get some more on the on the brush. Bring it down, try and keep them straight though, because water does fall straight unless it's hitting things and getting pushed around. And there's not really, see now the waterfall doesn't finish at the bottom of the rock. The water's coming out into the, bloody water there all right like that so we want to sort of do <coughs> we're going to give it a bit of turbulence there this will get detailed when we detail the water all right i've just added some shadow behind that water and up the top here now so we can get that water to stand out i've got to clean that brush because i want to pick up pure white now on it just to add the detail to this front waterfall because it's closest to us we don't have to detail these back ones back here but I want to detail this front one so I'm just loosening up that white and we want to get some get it nice and sharp within there and now this is I'm not sure if the camera will be picking it up but in real life this water is got more white over it now <coughs> and it's breaking up as it hits the bottom and we'll add some more intense white foam down here now we're ready to detail over all this now I want to detail this bit here first and a band across here going from the reference picture and I'm going to tint that up mixing some black, that's the black I hope, yeah, and cadmium yellow light. Now that, so let's see, it's very hard to see, I might have had a bit more yellow with it, it does look a bit dark I'm pretty much detailing it with this tone is going to change here. That's why we've blocked it in. So our different colours are going to make different colours in our shrubs and trees. Okay, now we'll highlight that. I'm just going to add a bit more yellow to the mix. I'm just going to put some more black in that because it doesn't seem to be enough depth in there for my liking for that. And this is a brighter tree more closer than those hills. All right, now I want to start from this side. I've just got the forest green or sap green mixed with a bit more yellow. And we're going to give this its green color now, playing with the blacks, leave them there. Right now I want to get some vivid greens in here to shape this front because at the moment it's kind of blending with the back so now we're going to sort that out. Now getting our phthalo blue that's going to give us a more vivid green with our cadmium yellow light. This will give us our 
flavor we're looking for now i'm just showing you in this area i've just dried that and i've added some more yellow to the mix and we're going to sit this at the top because this is going to create the detail to sink the back mountains back let me have a look in my monitor see how that's worked yep this is very minimal and then we're going to add some more yellow to this mix giving the edges to our front trees here Got all sorts flickering up into there the lights just hitting it them dark colors we put over the rock it allows this light color you want to trace in there stand out it's, it's got its own shadow there it's not going to look wrong now I'm sort of putting bushes there's another one here in front because I want to highlight this now we've got all the dark shadow colors there everything's happening everything's put in its place now to take shape so I just want to show you get the edge here down there feathering back this way we've got lights and darks happening everywhere I'll get this coming the other way get something coming here Before I add the final highlight, I'm just um, touching up the, the depth, the blacks. Okay, I've just finished doing all those black shadows a bit more around the bottom of the waterfall and that. They're going to be done extra more when we get to it. But this last colour I put on, I've just still got it in the brush and I want to get some of the yellow. This is the cad yellow medium. So I don't want to smash too much of this all over it and kill it now. We've just got to be subtle because sometimes we can overdo things and just destroy what we've created and it hurts. It hurts the feeling. It's very painful and hurting. All right, so I'm going to, I've got sort of round balls here. Watch, I've well, got nice round balls. Get these highlights subtle, leaving the darks there. How's that looking? Yay, said Ray. So we're coming down, just hovering, not big, smashing, ugly. This is the detail, okay? On the top, this is setting the, the back mountain back as well foliage colour here and there all right we're going to detail this so pretty much all this corner has got the the green but I've got it muted with some white just so as we're going to give us that glary shadow in this part of the foliage here
I'm just using the reference as a slight guide because I want to stamp in some um, few more dark values in here just before I highlight it because I don't want to highlight too much of a muted color. I've just added the yellow to this muted color and I'm doing the final detail in that. The final bit is just adding that dead stick color to give it that sense of realism in this foliage here. Okay, now we're going to finish the water off. Now we want to mix up these two colours and scallop them in together. So I've got the lighter one here and I'm going to start scalloping that into the darker colour. Just over in the distance here we're getting the lightest dark value along the water's edge here. And we're going to pick up this darker colour now and what we did with those light ones do the same but scallop them from the dark like you've seen me do in other videos into the lighter areas there Just doing a bit of the, the dark from here into there and some of this colour. Okay, now I'm just picking up the pure white. Just grabbing that light blue colour now and I'm doing long lines and sort of scrumbling it into that white, killing a lot of those big blobs but leaving it there at the same time. Can you see what that's doing? Alright, I'll just sign it and show you what it looks like. Put a frame on there. All right, we've got a decent realistic foliage type of waterfall. You beginners can follow this process and start putting this into your work, knowing what goes on first, second and third and so on. That ain't too shabby, is it, eh? All right, don't forget to look at the links in the descriptions below. There's a few links down there, one for my Facebook page, Patreons, and my video catalog. And I've also whacked the link in there for Grayscale's YouTube channel. He's got a lot to show you beginners how he blends in acrylic as well, all right? If you like what we've done today, tell your friends, but if you don't, you better tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.